What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel. It is Carter Scotland Allen here, and today we're taking a look at The Unbearable Weight of Massive Talent, starring the Nicolas Cage, as well as Pedro Pascal, and directed by Tom Gormican. Let's not waste any more time and get into this movie review. So once again, this film is starring Nicolas Cage, playing Nicolas Cage, playing himself. He's playing in an alternate version of himself. It's really not an alternate version. It's just a heightened version of himself. This was written and directed by Tom Gormican. Uh, I am very excited to talk about this movie. Let's get into it. Unfulfilled and facing financial ruin, actor Nick Cage accepts a $1 million offer to attend a wealthy fan's birthday party. Things take a wildly unexpected turn when a CIA operative recruits Cage for an unusual mission. Taking on the role of a lifetime, he soon finds himself channeling his most iconic and beloved characters to save himself and his loved ones. Okay, so let's get into the directing for this film. Uh, Tom Gormican, I have literally zero idea what he has done before this film, but this film, as far as this film goes, it's fantastic. I, I didn't... I have not found a comedy in years that has really just stuck with me. The comedy in general, uh, there's been plenty of TV shows that I've found hilarious and that that are great nowadays. You know, Welcome to Flatch is a new series that I genuinely love. Um, but as for comedy movies, comedy films, there's so much, as for mainstream comedy films, there's so much that just feels repeated and just feels gross just to be gross. This film doesn't do that. Uh, the director of this, Tom Gormican, knows exactly what Nicolas Cage fans want while also making fun of him, making fun of yourself, making fun of making fun of Nicolas Cage fans for for liking some of the things that he does do. Like some of the weird stuff that he does, why do we like like it's just there's so much I could talk about with this film, but the directing as a whole is fantastic. The visuals were great, the acting was great, the writing was hilarious, the delivery was fucking great. Uh, I would love to see this writer and director do another comedy because, again, this is a idea that is so unique and so bizarre that I, I'm, I'm honestly going to look out for any of this director and writer's future work. Okay, and as for the cast and the characters, we have to talk about the man himself, Nicolas Cage. And yes, I do have a sticker of Nicolas Cage as a pickle, otherwise known as Pickless Cage, on my phone. Um, <laughs> so there's that. But I, 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 dude, this movie's fantastic. The fuck, it's it's hilarious. And like, I don't want to say anything about it because if you like Nicolas Cage, you need you need to just watch it. And this is a movie that I would say go support it in theaters. Uh, if you're a Marvel fan even and you want to go see Doctor Strange, don't go see this. Like, I I love this movie. This is this is top twenty comedies of all time for me. Like, I I cried in theaters twice. My my dad was like next to me just dying laughing. The whole theater, even though it was basically an empty theater, but everybody behind us was dying laughing. It was one of the best theater experiences of my life, and we had basically an empty theater. The bond between Nicolas Cage and Pedro Pascal was fantastic. Nicolas Cage did a great job at going back into his previous roles, as well as making fun of himself while still staying true to what you would think Nicolas Cage is, is like and he, he seems like such a weird goofball fun dude and this movie does a great job at capturing that. All I'll say is Whoa! like the, the the if you've seen the movie I know that's that's a terrible way of doing it but uh that that moment I lost my shit. Like I literally like I lost my fucking shit. I, I was crying, I was laughing, like, just thinking about it now, because he's Nicholas fucking Cage, like, god damn it, I love this movie, so, uh, Nicholas Cage, he did a great job, Pedro Pascal, fantastic, who would have thought Pedro Pascal on a comedy, uh, one of my favorite roles of his, probably my favorite role, he, like, it outdoes Mandalorian, I, I love Pedro Pascal, uh, everybody else does a great job in this cast. You've got Tiffany Haddish as well as Ike Barinholtz. Everybody does a great job. The film overall is fantastic. 
now let's move on to the story. So again, this story, this is something that I had really very little knowledge of going into it. I had seen like one trailer and after that first trailer, I didn't really focus on it. I knew I was going to see it. I knew I had an interest in it, but I just, I didn't, you know, it was a film that I didn't, didn't think I needed to, to watch a bunch of trailers be like, oh, is this going to be in it? Is this going to be in it? And I'm glad I didn't watch a bunch of trailers because I, I do think uh, going back and watching the trailers, they did show quite a bit, not as much as you would think, but I was so very genuinely pleasantly surprised with this film. I had such a fun time. Every little twist and turn, uh, the little shrine, I'll say, there's a shrine uh, that like, there's just things like that. You don't expect it, but when it happens, you're like, oh my God, I should have expected it. It's hilarious, it makes sense, it's funny, it's dumb. Just go see this movie, dude. <laughs> Now, as for the cinematography, I don't necessarily have too much to say. I'll say the visuals looked like they looked great. They looked fine. Uh, they, they really weren't noticeable. And that that's always a, a weird thing to say because that means they did a good job at making you uh, feel engaged, you know, in this world. But, it you know, it's, it's not supposed to look like Avatar or Star Wars. It's not supposed to be anything crazy visually. So, so what are you supposed to notice? Um, and it's not some super artsy fartsy film where you're supposed to notice the weird framing or blocking of the characters. Uh, but it's just it's shot very well. You can tell what's happening. Everything's lit very well. The blocking's fine. Like, it's very well uh, put together on a technical standpoint. And oftentimes you're not gonna notice things like that because they are done so well. They're done so well that you aren't supposed to notice them. And that is uh, honestly kind of a sad thing that I find about uh, filmmaking is that the, the best work does oftentimes go unnoticed. And as for the score, I have to say it, it kind of doesn't count but the the well I guess it does because the there's a score that mixes in it's the um, the diegetic and non diegetic audio both you know mixed together to create this score and I know that's you know mostly the case with most films but with this film it, it feels really well done really well put together really seamless uh, and Everything about the audio in this film uh, that's non-diegetic or... Yeah, every everything about the audio that's non-diegetic in this film is absolutely what you would expect in a film about Nick Cage playing Nick Cage. I know that was a mouthful, but if you get it, then you get it. If you don't, then I'm not going to explain it. I'm sorry. Okay, and for the final thoughts, I will say, obviously, I, I loved this film. I genuinely loved it. I will be purchasing this film. Honestly, I might even buy this on on Steelbook. Uh, I don't think I will be going out to buy, you know, all of Nicolas Cage's films, but I think buying, but I think buying this film along with, you know, maybe one or two of my personal favorite Nicolas Cage films, like, Honestly, I might go... I, I've never seen Mandy, so I know I'm going to go watch Mandy, and I have a feeling I'm going to really enjoy it. So I'll probably end up buying, you know, like, The Unbearable Weight of Massive Talent and Mandy and National Treasure. And, you know, and just call it good with this little three-film collection of of uh, Nicolas Cage. But, you know, it, it this film is so fantastic. If you like Nicolas Cage, you're going to like this film. Like, seriously. Even if you don't like Nicolas Cage overall... I would still try and give this film a chance because of the fact that it it does make fun of him, but in such it's such a light-hearted film, while just being so dumb and over the top. It's just go see it, go have fun, just put it. You know, if you can rent it and just have fun on a Saturday night. You don't need alcohol for this. You don't need weed for this. This is just a genuinely fun movie, and you don't you don't get that with too many comedies. I personally find so this film is definitely top 20 comedies of all time for me I will be purchasing this film I said steelbook earlier but I think I'll probably just stick with the blu-ray but either way uh, if you like this if you like this type of film you know comedies or Nicolas Cage I would say buy it if you if you aren't sure then I would say maybe wait and stream it but if you're a fan of Nicolas Cage in any way don't wait and go see this in theaters because I do think it deserves the support. So 
that is my review for The Unbearable Weight of Massive Talent. Tell me what you guys thought of this film in the comments down below. I'm Carter Scotland-Allen, and I will see you guys in the next movie review. Peace.